What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, my name is Dr. James Cellini and I'm a board certified practicing veterinary neurologist and neurosurgeon. On today's episode, I'm going to do things a little bit different. I am simply going to tell you about the individual that I believe is the greatest veterinarian of all time. Now I know what you were thinking, Dr. Cellini, how is that even a thing that's such a subjective sort of statement to make? Isn't that just your opinion? And the answer is yes, that is my opinion. But after I walk you through this man's career, I think you'll probably tend to agree with me too that he is at least, at the very least, in the conversation for the greatest veterinarian of all time. Before I go any further, if you don't mind hitting the like and subscribe button, that greatly helps the algorithm. Helping the algorithm, in this case, helps more people know about this great man and his contributions to veterinary medicine, and in particular, neurology. So without further ado, let me introduce to you, Dr. Alexander Delahunt. So Dr. De La Hunta, or Dr. D as he was affectionately nicknamed, was born in the 1930s in New Hampshire, graduated from veterinary school at the University of Cornell in the late 50s, and worked as a veterinarian in New Hampshire from 1958 to 1960. Dr. D went back to Cornell and obtained his PhD in 1963, and from 1963 to 2005, those 42 years, he served as a clinical professor of anatomy and clinical sciences. Now, during those 42 years, Dr. De La Hunta produced a volume of research and clinical work that is quite honestly astounding. For starters, Dr. De La Hunta published over 260 peer-reviewed research articles in 42 years. And to put that into perspective, that is on average over six articles every year or one research article every two months for 42 years. Baseball has Cal Ripken. Football has Brett Favre. Against Brett Favre. There is the hit coming from behind, and Brett Favre never oh, saw him coming. And veterinary neurology has Dr. Alexander De La Hanta. I'm required to tell you that I have no disclosures. Have you ever tried to write a peer-reviewed research article yourself? It is very difficult, very time-consuming, and he managed to do one every two months for 42 years. Like... I cannot even fathom that. Is there a human physician equivalent to that level of productivity over that stretch of time? Comment below if you know somebody. Now, as if publishing a peer-reviewed research article every two months for 42 years wasn't enough, Dr. D also published numerous textbooks. Textbooks like Miller's Anatomy of the Dog, which almost every vet student uses to study dog anatomy, uh, Neuropathology, which he co-authored with his colleague, Dr. Summers, this book is so rare. Uh, this book, I think, goes for like $600 online now. It's like the NFT uh, veterinary textbooks. And then finally, my personal favorite, Veterinary Neuroanatomy and Clinical Neurology. This book is the absolute Bible of veterinary neurology. So we have a whole bunch of research articles. We have a whole bunch of textbooks. Let's talk about some of his actual scientific discoveries. A really good example of this is a condition that we now call feline ischemic encephalopathy, or FIE for short. Today, we know this condition is caused by a migrating parasite called acute urebra. Acute urebra is the larval stage of a bot fly. And what we now know is that sometimes cats will inhale this larval stage of the bot fly growth cycle. And when they do that, the larva has a tendency to almost migrate through their brain. It starts in their nose and kind of crawl through their brain, as unpleasant as that sounds. When it does that, it damages the brain in multiple ways that I don't need to get into right now. But suffice it to say, this is a serious condition and has claimed the lives of many cats. But before Dr. D figured out and characterized this disease, we didn't know that it was caused by acute urebra migration. All we knew is that sometimes, typically in the late summer months, like July, August, September, many clinics in the northeast and eastern seaboard would start to see cats with a unique sort of presentation. They would usually have a combination of seizures and behavior change. But we could never figure out what was causing this problem and unfortunately, this problem typically progressed until the cats either died or were euthanized because of how severe their symptoms were. Whereas most people would just kind of put their hands up and say, yeah, it's a mystery. We just don't know what causes this. Dr. De La Hunta, that wasn't good enough for him. He decided he was going to find the answer to this clinical mystery. So he set out and did exactly that. He started looking at the brains of these cats, looking at them under a microscope, doing gross dissections of them. 
And lo and behold, what he eventually discovered was that these cats had migrating parasites within their brain, this cuterebra. And he basically uncovered the cause of this disease, this clinical presentation, which had been a mystery for so many years. And we now know this condition as FIE or feline ischemic encephalopathy. But it wasn't just cats or even cats and dogs. It was birds, horses, goats, cows, pigs, harbor seals. He was truly devoted to studying disease in as many animal species as he possibly could. Now, aside from all that, my personal favorite part of Dr. De La Hunta's career was his speaking and his lectures. He had this extremely unique, dare I say, unmatched ability to present information such as the neurologic exam on a horse. He was able to engage his audience and explain really complex things like neuroanatomy and neuropathology in a way that just made sense. Like you could understand it, even though it seemed like the most complicated thing in the world. And to illustrate what I'm talking about, here's a snippet from a video of Dr. De La Hunta performing a neurological exam on a calf and walking you through his thought process and what he's seeing in this neurologically abnormal calf. I'll post the link to the full video that I'm taking this from in the description. HEM is a two month old female Holstein. Abnormal gait, slowly progressive for two weeks. Now think what you just saw in those two horses and make this anatomic diagnosis. At two o'clock in the morning in the large animal clinic, there's nobody there to bother you. As this calf turns, watch very carefully on the outside limb. Oh, and watch it just float a little bit, overreach a little bit. Oh, there it is. You think about how a calf normally walks. I hope I can convince you that this calf is walking more like the first horse you saw, Oslo. Now, I'm not capable of doing this with a, a horse the size of Oslo. Some neurologists will pick up one limb at a time and with their shoulder push him to the side. I never felt I could use that successfully. But in a guy this size, and, and a calf as cooperative as this one is, and there may be a good reason for that that I wasn't thinking of at the time, But to me, these hopping responses are slow. It takes both normal UMN and GP systems for the hopping responses to be normal. There's no way you can test for general proprioception by itself, regardless of what people teach you or is in the literature. That's my humble opinion. <laughs> so what do you think? Do you think this looks like a lesion between C1 and C5? or a lesion in his neuromuscular system. You wouldn't answer me anyway. <laughs> I think this is an absolutely classic gait for a calf with a C1 to C5 lesion. Very cooperative calf. Thank you, sir. It's important to remember watching this that these things like a neurologic exam on a cow and looking at horses and figuring out neurolocalizations and dogs and all these different diseases, None of this was really a thing. These things weren't known prior to Dr. De La Hunta's career. And because of all these discoveries, he literally founded the practice of neurology. And the reason that we're able to treat neurologic disease in animals today is due in large part because of his work. He literally founded veterinary neurology. It's so amazing to even think about. So again, if you're at all interested in seeing that lecture in its entirety, it is freely available on the ACVIM YouTube page. I'll post the link in the description below. So even though Dr. De La Hunta was retired by that point, he continued to work with speaking engagements and helping out with case consultations all through his late 70s and 80s through the 2000s. And Dr. De La Hunta unfortunately passed away in August of 2021 at the age of 88, but he leaves behind a body of work that I frankly don't think will be matched um, ever in veterinary medicine. 
Um, he is the sole reason why we understand many diseases the way we do and why people like me are able to practice veterinary neurology and treat and solve problems in veterinary neurology um, the way that I am. It is solely because of him and his discoveries and research throughout his life. All right, guys, so I hope you liked that video. I know it was a little bit different, but I wanted to pay tribute to Dr. De La Hunta because he is such an important figure in veterinary medicine. If you liked what you see, please like and subscribe. Maybe leave a comment below. If by some chance anybody who's watching this has interacted with Dr. De La Hunta or had him as a teacher, I would love to hear your story, truly. So please leave a comment if that's the case or if you just liked the video in general. Thanks a lot. I'll talk to you next time.